All right, so a vote to end the partial government shutdown is supposed to take place sometime this week. President Trump said on Saturday that he would temporarily extend protections for DACA recipients in exchange for the $5.7 billion to fund the border wall. I know this has changed somewhat by the Supreme Court, but isn't this what it basically all comes down to, Mary? If not in this construct, some sort of other grand bargain, Republicans get the money they want for the border security, Democrats get DACA protections? It's hardly a grand compromise. I mean, Trump has always had DACA on the table, and he, he, I mean, he just keeps... He just keeps making and keeping promises, and they just keep making theatrics. It's an 80% issue. I, I don't know. I know everybody's obsessed with it up there, but nobody out here is talking about it. It is an 80% issue. Nobody understands why we don't have sovereign, secure borders and why the Democrats are turning down things that they had previously ran on. And the dirty little secret is, is not the Republicans who are split, it's the Democrats who are split. And the moderate Democrats just got elected, and those would be the ones that gave them the majority, are freaking out or starting to freak out. So yeah. I'm not, I think Trump just has to hang on, hang on, hang on. But Mary, why do we hear the president referring to this border wall now as, uh, quote, steel barriers in high priority locations? It's not the same wall he was talking about on the election trail. Uh, these types of... Uh, characterizations of this wall, they're angering Trump's base, uh, and like political pundit Ann Coulter. Here's what she told Howie Carr yesterday right here on Newsmax TV. Well, as usual, uh, I wanted to strangle Trump. So any amnesty, any amnesty at all, no matter how they claim it's going to be limited, it just goes to the courts, ties up the courts, and millions of people, even people who are not here right now, will get amnesty. That's why I wanted to shoot the TV when I was listening to Trump's address. Is she right, Mary? <laughs> Anne is, uh, she is a fabulous scholar of history and knows how revolutions get out of control like the French when she understands mob rule and she understands and knows the history of language. When we say something, I don't believe for a nanosecond that Trump is for amnesty at all, but that we, every time the language changes, there's such distrust from everybody towards the political leaders on both sides, that he gets sucked up into that. Anne is right to keep the pressure on, but I don't think she has to worry about the, the president. I think he's going to be just fine on this. Do you consider anything short of deportation? I mean, do, is this what, you know, Ann Coulter thinks? Anything short of deportation is some sort of amnesty? Is there some, you know, permanent status without getting citizenship? Is there some sort of new status that can be created? Well, there are We've been saying this for 20 years. We've been saying this as long as I've been in politics, which is more than 20 years. It's decades and decades and decades. There has to be some sort of system that rewards merit that is good for the United States, not turning the United States into sanctuary cities and havens for criminals and uh, attraction to well, the welfare state. And, and but we need we need workers in certain industries, so there ne there needs to be a status for that. There needs to be the, the merit uh, immigrants should get priority over the asylum immigrants. But we can't even get to the table because the Democrats are keep doing this theatrics. It's just theatrics. Meanwhile, thousands, tens of thousands, scores of thousands of immigrants keep coming over the border. It's it's just an unsustainable. Everybody it's knows that, thing. but we, we, as you mentioned, Mary, we keep coming back to the same situation. Decades and decades, nothing gets done. We're going to have to move well, on. We to the, have more of a wall, and we have a unique president in President Trump. This is true. And he is so unique. As long as he is not, it doesn't cave and and reopen the government without some pledge for the wall. You can call it. What's the difference between a wall? A barrier. Well, a that difference obviously matters a lot to people like Ann Coulter, but let's leave that issue aside because I want to talk about 2020 while we still have you here. 28, 28 people are possibly running for president on the Democratic side. Eight are definite. We're going to get word from Vice President Joe Biden and New, York, New Jersey Senator Cory Booker uh, any moment, maybe in the time we take this interview when it airs. But out of the you know, straight out of the gate, who should President Trump and Republicans be most concerned about in the early days of the 2020 campaign? They should be most concerned about something that's not going to happen, which is some <clears throat> middle ground, common sense, practical, non-swearing, non-gross, non-ridiculous, like attacking Covington College kids, I mean high school kids, 
They have somebody staying in the race, and I don't see anybody in that lineup that would have offer staying proposals. Then, then we should be we shouldn't even be worried about that because even if they have somebody who ends up giving as blooming uh, as uh, as Bloomberg said the other day, moderate. I don't even know what moderate is. That's speed. But if they have somebody giving practical solutions, they'll never keep their promises as evidenced by their history. So I don't I don't even think Trump has anything to worry about. He beats them at every turn. It's true. At every turn. I'm not worried at all. And they keep coming out to free lunch. Everything is a free lunch. There's no such thing as a free lunch. You can't right, one, free I want to ask you real quickly, too, here. before we have to run about one particular candidate who was speaking yesterday. Kirsten Gillibrand, the New York senator, gave a speech in New York City to honor Dr. Martin Luther King, Dr. Martin Luther King. But of course, she took the opportunity to slam President Trump. Take a listen. Until now, until this person in the White House, until our president has chosen to tear this country apart on every line, every division, every racial line, every religious line, he chooses to divide us community by community. He has inspired a hate and a darkness in this country that I have never witnessed myself. He is tearing apart the very fabric of who we are as a nation, our very common decency. And that is what we are being called to fight against. How are the Democratic candidates going to differentiate themselves? Because this seems to be the unifying message and nobody's going to stand out in a, in a field of 28 people, Mary. Does that sound like it's a cross between idiocracy and a desperate cry for hormone therapy. Well, I, it, is, it makes my point about the theatrics. A desperate cry who for is, hormone who, therapy? Well, who is, like, what is she, I don't, can't even listen to that. What is she, I'm trying to compete with Hillary screaming? This is about New York senators. It, it, I, that's the worst thing I have heard of anybody coming out of the so in other words, That makes Howard Dean scream look like Romper room. Oh, my goodness. See why I'm not worried? I see why you're not worried. Mary Matlin, as always, great uh, to talk to you. I don't know what Kirsten Gillibrand is going to say about that uh, hormone therapy comment, but we'll find out. Great to hear from you and great and hope, look forward to uh, talking to you again very soon. Go Saints! Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more live breaking news coverage, exclusive interviews, and videos from Newsmax TV, Click subscribe on our YouTube channel and don't forget to download the free Newsmax TV app for alerts. Newsmax TV, it's real news for real people.